Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Stranger Things Dungeons & Dragons starter set. Uh, so this is a really uh, recent release from uh, Wizards of the Coast. It is a licensed product for the Stranger Things uh, Netflix series, which I guess is going into its third season. Uh, so this came out the, well, there's a little bit of a story I guess as to why it's, it's taken me as long as it has to get my hands on this. So the release date, according to the Wizards of the Coast website, was at the beginning of May. So I want to say it was like May 4th or somewhere along those lines. <clears throat> so I was just waiting for my local game store because they always order the newest, um, you know, D&D stuff uh, into their store. So I was just, you know, keeping an eye on their, um, their new product, their new inventory. They post pictures on Facebook. And uh, on the day that this was supposed to be released, there was nothing. So I sent them a message wondering if they had picked it or if they'd received it yet, and um, they they hadn't. And they, you know, basically they had just gotten the May catalog from their distributor, and their distributor had not featured it in their catalog until the May catalog, which you get it in May, and then the order starts shipping out in June or July, I think, even um, at that point. I think it's it's either a month or two. Um, so I, when I was in the store, we, I asked them, you know, if there's a possibility that they could uh, order it, and they looked it up on the website, and the same distributor that never listed it until, you know, the catalogs for stuff that you would get, you know, in the summer, uh, had it had the release date listed as like April 11th. So it was just sort of a confusing situation, but uh, they did finally get uh, their copies in. They they ordered them from the distributor after we after I inquired. Uh, so we have it here. Uh, so this is the set itself. Uh, before I sort of look it over and open it up, uh, I will say that I have actually not watched a single episode of Stranger Things. It's something that I had considered doing before uh, this came out, um, but I just never got around to it. And honestly, I, as, the, as the time grew closer, I thought it would be sort of interesting to look at this and review this as a Dungeons and Dragons product, because that's sort of how I'm looking at it. It's you know that's my interest in it is for a D&D product. Is it a good D&D adventure? Are the characters interesting characters? Is the adventure an interesting adventure? Uh, so you know with with the the license notwithstanding, uh, one thing that I will say uh, when it comes to the Stranger Things uh, show and how I think that that could have interacted with a Hasbro-owned uh, role-playing game is I almost feel like it would have been better suited um, using like the uh, a re resurrected D20 Modern uh, <clears throat> because you could play the adventure from like the kid's perspective and you know like the box art even shows like the you know the kids from the 1980s or whatever it is whenever it is that they're playing so, you know, I think it's just, to me it feels like a missed opportunity, uh, but the adventure in here is meant to be the adventure that one of the kids was running for his friends uh, when they started, um, you know, at the beginning of the show. So it's not meant to be like the actual Stranger Things um, events, it's the adventure within, it's, it's the D&D adventure within the TV show, and not the actual TV show that's being turned into a role-playing game, although, again, um, you know, in Wizards of the Coast, you're absolutely free to use this, but if you wanted to uh, make this sort of a standalone product and put out, um, you know, make D20 Modern available for print on demand through Drive Through RPG or DMs Guild, then that would be pretty cool as well. And then you could really play it like the show. Uh, anyway, let's just go ahead and take a look at the box. It does have this little window cut out so you can see the Demogorgon miniature. And this is the, the Demogorgon based off of the TV show and not, um, not based off of like the actual uh, you know, two-headed Demogorgon uh, Prince of Demons from, from D&D lore. Uh, the box itself has some you know, fake uh, shelfware sort of put into it. It looks almost like it's kind of creased there. You got you know, a little bit of a rip there. It's interesting um, that they made that decision. Um, you know, I guess aesthetically, it's I guess it's meant to look like something that's been on the shelf since whenever like the show uh, was set to take place in. Uh, it also uses the old uh, like the the Frank Menser version uh, D and D like Dungeons and Dragons logo. So this is from like the basic expert rules. Uh, and the red box is again that sort of classic uh, red box from the 80s. Uh, the sides just have 
the uh, the D&D the logo there on the top. The top also has shelfware put on it, but oddly enough, the bottom really doesn't. And if you're someone who owns box sets and you like take them off the shelf and put them back on frequently, or even infrequently, the bottom's the part that's going to get the shelfware, and the top should look relatively okay. Uh, but you know, uh, it's just an aesthetic thing. I'm not going to you know worry about that too too much. Uh, so the retail price here in Canada is $34.99, so this is kind of an expensive product. Um, for just a little bit more, uh, you could also get like the Starfinder Beginner Box, and I don't really want to compare the two directly because this is still technically a cheaper product, but it is hard to ignore the fact that that starter set is also out there, and this, this is... A, about ten dollars more than what the original fifth edition one cost when it came out uh, for the Canadian price. So I think the the American price, the U.S. price, is also twenty four ninety nine. Uh, so a ten dollar markup seems a little steep, but that's just that's just the you know the, the the retail price, the suggested retail price for Canada. So there you go. Um, on the back, we have the Dungeons Dragons logo again. Then we have the Stranger Things logo. Uh, um, then it gives a little description here, so I guess we'll go through and read this. So it says, Embark on a Dungeons & Dragons adventure created by Mike, who I'm assuming is a character from the show. Uh, it says here, Mike Wheeler from Hawkins, Indiana, probably a character from the show, uh, has created an awesome Dungeons & Dragons adventure, and now you get to play it. Uh, pick your character. Will you be Will the Wise or Dustin the Dwarf? and get your fireballs ready as you investigate the mysterious castle and battle the ferocious Demogorgon, which again is uh, this version of Demogorgon here. Uh, will you make it out alive? Will you encounter a beast with seven heads? Uh, did you pick your, or did you pack your wrist rocket, which must be again a reference to the show? Uh, prepare yourself for anything because the game just got stranger. And it says, great for new Dungeons and Dragons player. Oh, great for the new Dungeons & Dragons player. So, whoops, I guess we'll go ahead and show that there. Uh, so the contents are Stranger Things Adventure Book, <clears throat> the rule book, five Stranger Things character sheets, six dice, uh, a Demogorgon figure, and then a paintable Demogorgon figure. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to open this up, and we will have a look inside the box and see what's contained in here. All right, and we are back. I just got the plastic off. I had to go get my knife, so I didn't want to keep all that uh, on camera. Uh, so let's just have a look inside here. Uh, so we have our bag of dice. This was taped um, to this plastic tray, uh, but I did remove that and uh, you know before I went to start recording just to, to get that out of the way as well. So here we have our game dice, and these look very much like the ones that came in the original starter set. Um, I thought the original starter set actually had seven dice. I thought they had the percentile uh, D10 in there. Uh, so I went actually went and checked that um, while I was grabbing my knife. And uh, as it turns out, uh, it did not. So these are probably the, the exact same sets that are in the, in the, uh, the original starter set as well. But again, they have a little bit of design to them. They sort of have like the, the two-tone sort of metallic swirl look to them. Uh, which is pretty cool. I do like that. And then we have this red uh, insert, which it, the, the other starters had had an insert in it as well, uh, but it was faced the other way to have all the, the books and stuff on top of it. Uh, but this one, they have it going the other way. Um, and then they actually cut out a little window so you can see the, the rule booklet underneath. And then we just have our two uh, Demogorgon figures. So we'll have a closer look at those. I'm not going to pull them out. Um, but the biggest difference really looks like there's maybe a little bit of dry brushing. Um, or maybe not even dry brushing, maybe like a wash that went over this one here. They give it sort of a reddish tinge to it. And then the uh, the inside of the mouth is painted. But otherwise, they're, they're, they look pretty much, uh, pretty much the same. I'll just lift this out. Whoop. So that lifts out, that tray is separate, so when you go to put it back in, it just sort of does that. And then we have our starter set rule book. And, ooh, okay, that must be the adventure book. That looks pretty cool. I guess I showed it on the back, but I never really paid too much attention until I see it here. 
so that's pretty cool. Uh, one thing I guess I really should mention, um, just going back to the box here just for a moment, is it um, you know really shows off like the Hasbro gaming logo. And the only thing I can think of is because I, the, the Ghost of Salt Marsh, which actually releases after this, uh, that book doesn't have like the big Hasbro logo, or at least I didn't recognize or notice it. Uh, I suspect it's probably on here because Hasbro, as the parent company, has the licensing rights to you know produce these Stranger Things products, or at least this one in particular. Uh, and where Wizards of the Coast is a subsidiary, maybe they just wanted to make sure that they had, for legal reasons I would assume, uh, have like the, the main company's logo there in addition to the Wizard of the Coast one. I don't think it's a permanent change. It was something that kind of concerned me at first because this was uh, that logo or this box art and everything was released a while before the other D&D books to come out uh, were. So when you see like the big Hasbro logo, it's like, uh oh, um, what's what's happening with this? Um, so anyway, uh, let's just set this stuff sort of aside here. Uh, we'll take a quick look through the starter set rulebook. Uh, I suspect this is probably going to be a pretty standard, um, you know, set of rules as how to play. So getting started, your ability scores, the combat system, uh, adventuring, which has like travel, uh, resting, rewards, and equipment. And then you've got spell casting, um, you know, like spells, how to, what are spells, how to cast a spell, the list and the descriptions. And then you have three different appendix. Uh, so appendix A is magic items, appendix B is monsters, and appendix C is conditions. Typically speaking, things like Appendix A and B would actually appear in the second book, the one with the adventure in it. Uh, but So I assume there's probably a reason why they're not in there. Um, I haven't looked through the adventure book yet, so we'll, we'll sort of see how that goes. And the book itself is also designed to have, look like it has a little bit of wear here, so we'll go through and uh, see what we got. So the first thing we have is chapter one how to play and the chapter titles are like this red lettering on a black background so when the books tilted away it's not going to show up I don't think super well on the camera uh, but we do have actual minis uh, like a picture of actual minis from um, like well just actual minis and not uh, so that's kind of cool I like that uh, as I guess a little example of play and then getting started has your dice there six ability scores advantage disadvantage proficiency bonus uh, contest ability checks and then it goes into your stats like strength dexterity uh, wisdom charisma and then oh, okay here we go so again another reason why I feel like maybe d20 modern is like the, the system that they should be using for this um, instead of having artwork of the characters for the adventure that's just a screenshot from the from the show. So again, and I, I guess like I said, I understand it because this is a licensed product after all. Um, but the the characters that you're playing aren't like the real world characters. They're like D and D characters. So it would have been nice to have seen some artwork um, of the D and D characters, even if they were like sketches or something. Um, you know, made to look like they were drawn by the kids. I thought that would you know that might be kind of cool. But it looks like they're just going to use, yeah, there's another one, uh, a shot from the, uh, from the show. But here we're into the adventuring section. Some equipment, armor, weapons. I mean, the information in here is all useful. So overall, like, this is a good book, a good little booklet to have. Um, yeah, and there's another set of characters from the show. So it looks like that's what we're going to have. Uh, then we got our spells here. Revivify, Zone of Truth, and then our appendix. So we got the magic items, monsters. So this has got a few different monster stats. Oh, so we got like the bugbear, the cultist, and we have the demo gorgon. So we'll just have a look here 16 strength, uh, 12 dex, 16 con, 3 intelligence. So, so he has a very feral creature. Like that's, that's animal based intelligence. Um, wisdom and five charisma, twelve wisdom I should say. So has blind sight and past perception, keen smell, blood frenzy has advantage on melee attack rolls against any creature that doesn't have all of its hit points. That's pretty mean. 
uh, and then it regenerates 10 hit points per round unless it takes acid or fire, so kind of like a troll there I guess. Uh, the Demogorgon dies only if it starts to turn with zero hit points and doesn't regenerate and then it's got like, oh. so multi-attack it attacks with its claws and its bite makes three attacks one with its bite and two with its claws so the bite plus five to hit 1d8 plus three piercing and the claw plus five to hit 2d8 plus three slashing really I mean I guess yeah those are pretty big those are pretty big claws but 2d8 to get two of those like I figured that the bite would have been more powerful because I mean that's all like that's all teeth so huh that's that's interesting I wonder if that's correct or not I don't know if there's any I don't know if there's any errata or anything out for it it just seems like the claw damage and the bite damage should be uh, should be flipped but you know I'm not gonna argue with it too much I guess then we got a flame skull ghoul goblin hobgoblin a lot of these creatures were also in the original starter set uh, okra jelly I don't think was ogre orc owlbear sturge the Thessal Hydra obviously wasn't because um, that's uh, I guess a creature for this particular adventure um, I, I mean, the Thessal Hydra is something that existed before. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a creature that's existed in D&D. But uh, it just wasn't in the 5th edition starter set. We've got Troglodytes, Twig Blight, uh, Young Green Dragon makes another appearance in, uh, in a D&D starter set. But I like Green Dragon, so I'm not going to argue with that. They're one of my favorites. Uh, and then you got your conditions there, so that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool, um, you know, uh, standard fare for a starter set uh, booklet. So, you know, nothing really to complain about there. No character creation rules, but again, you know, you're using pre-generated characters. So, you know, the other starter set didn't have character creation rules in it either, to the best of my recollection. So, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fault for that when you have the characters already made. Uh, up next, we've got the adventure booklet. So, this is the hunt for the Thessal Hydra. This table is starting to really get on my nerves. Um, <clears throat> it's it's a round table. Instead of having a leaf, the edges flip out. So to have enough room to record, I have the edge flipped out. But it seems to be really creaky lately, and that's so I'll try not to to put my arms on it. I guess. So here we got the. So this is actually pretty cool. I like this. This is a nice uh, bit of presentation. It looks like a kid's notebook. Um, it's got like some graph paper on here with you know something that looks like a kid would draw it. Um, so let's just go ahead and... <laughs> Alright. Okay, this I like. Oh, hey, look! Um, a character sketch. So that's Will the Wise. That must be uh, drawn by Will the Wise himself. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. Uh, I hope they have the, for all the characters in there, because that would be pretty awesome. Uh, but this is actually really, really nice. I like this. This is cool. Um, I don't care about the license at this point. I just think that this is really neat because it looks like an actual scribbler. It's got, you know, the margin, it's got the the actual lines on it, and it looks like it's done in a handwritten style, which is pretty cool. So we'll see what we have for, for artwork, if there's any other art in here. Uh, so we got the background, the story, uh, the setup, gifts, uh, rumors on the road. So that's pretty neat. Now we got our map here, so the Cursed Labyrinth. Uh, Troglodyte Caverns, pretty pretty standard stuff. Um, oh, this is really cool. I, I love this presentation. This is really, really nice. Um, better handwriting than I have, that's for sure. Uh, so random Path, Generation, so that's kind of neat. Uh, special Encounters. And, uh, oh, we actually have like a sketch of a uh, suit of armor, which is pretty neat. I guess maybe that's an actual, it says the Lost Knight. I don't know if it's an actual knight or just a, a suit of armor, but that's still pretty cool. Then we've got the Upside Down, which I guess is a big part of the, of the show as well. Um, it says sort of an alternate dimension, an echo of the material plane. Um, that alone almost makes it sound like the Shadowfell, because the sh that's basically what the Shadowfell is, so... Yeah, so sort of maybe an interesting take on that. So I guess they must enter that as part of the adventure. 
upside down counters, the proud princess, and kind of neat little artwork there. There's the demo Gorgon, uh, at least the Stranger Things version of the demo Gorgon, so that's pretty cool. Then we got the layer of the Thessal Hydra. <laughs> oh, uh, pretty awesome little drawing of a troglodyte there, that's pretty cool. And then you've got uh, the Thessal Hydra there. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. That mouth just actually kind of looks happy. Like he's you know just really excited that he's you know in this adventure. I don't know that that that's awesome. That's actually really really cool looking. Uh, then we got the conclusion and a little section for notes, which is kind of cool. And then we just have the further adventures has the D and D logo, but just a big old blank space there. I almost feel like that would have been a good spot to show like the images of the player's handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide to Monster Manual. Maybe uh, have like the core books presented there. Uh, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, and they got your logos here for Netflix, Wizards of the Coast, and Hasbro. So yeah, overall, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, last thing we're gonna do, uh, I love the presentation in this book. Uh, but for me, this this here is my favorite part of this product, hands down. And um, it doesn't look like you need a ton of knowledge of the show to appreciate the adventure. Uh, which is the thing that I was hoping for. Um, I don't know that super well yet. I'd have to look through and see if it feels like there's maybe references that I'm missing or something like that, but uh, it does look like it is designed uh, pretty much just as a straightforward D&D adventure that just so happens to have elements from the show in it, but not necessarily, you know, re reliant on your knowledge of, of the source material, I guess. So that's pretty cool, and I'm happy to see that. Uh, let's just have a quick look at the characters, and then we will wrap this up. Whoops. <clears throat> so here we have the first character. Uh, they don't have names, which is interesting. I would have thought that where this is a licensed product, and these are based off the show's characters. Like, this, this is supposed to be based off of the kids' characters that are playing the D&D game, right? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I just seems like that would have been a perfect time to have the name fill in. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, also, the personality trait stuff is missing, so... Um, which is, is unusual, but I guess at the same time they want you to be able to... I'm resting my arms there again, I'm sorry. Uh, I guess they want you to be able to customize the character somewhat. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to, like I said, it's, it's interesting, but it's not a deal breaker, I, I wouldn't say. So this is a Hill Dwarf Bard, uh, and its stats are not great. <laughs> uh, not horrible, but we have a, so a negative one strength modifier. <clears throat> so nine strength, and then we have four 14s into dexterity, constitution, and charisma and then um, uh, just a 10 wisdom. So definitely not a uh, definitely not a power gaming uh, character and it is a dwarf bard and I, I like the fact that it's an unconventional uh, race class combination. I think that that's actually pretty cool and I think it would play just fine so uh, yeah that's pretty neat. And then the backs of the character. I'm not going to show the back for every single character, <clears throat> but it basically just has what it looks like, what they gain when they uh, they go up in a level. So you've got like what they get for fourth level, uh, what they get for fifth level, and then some background information. So there you go. Pretty neat there. Up next we have a wood elf cleric. So the Wood Elf Cleric has a 10 Strength, a 16 Dexterity, huh, uh, 14 Con, uh, 12 Intelligence, uh, 14 Wisdom, and a 10 Charisma. So this one actually has a 16. Hmm. stuff there. Still, you know, a decent, looks like an, an overall decent character. 18 armor class. Uh, I would assume it's got a shield, yes, yeah, shield and chainmail. A uh, mace like crossbow. 15 gold. It actually kind of feels like they're under-equipped for uh, third level characters, but anyway. 
Uh, so pretty neat there. So we got that character. So again, another sort of unconventional race class combination. I like that. Uh, oh, here's a pretty standard one. We got a human paladin. But I, they were playing, I think, AD&D um, when they were playing, like, in the, the... I think that was a version of the game they were using in the show. So back then, paladins had to be human, so it, it makes sense. Although you couldn't have a dwarf bard, because first edition bards were very difficult to make. Um, but uh, anyway, let's just go through. So th this one has a 16 as well, 16 strength. Uh, 14 con, uh, 10 dex, 10 in or 11 intelligence, and then uh, 14s for wisdom and charisma. So that one has a 16 as well. So, huh. I feel like the bard's getting a little bit shafted here. Uh, then we have the half orc ranger, uh, which is an archer character. The longbow is their primary weapon, or it's the first one on the sheet anyway. Uh, and there's uh, 16 there as well. So 16 strength, um, 14 dex. Uh, 12 or 14 con and then 10 intelligence 12 wisdom and 10 charisma so that one has a 16 as well yeah I really feel like the bard kind of got the the cruddy end of the stick there uh, then we have the half elf wizard so 8 strength 14 dex uh, 14 con 16 intelligence so the bard is the only character that doesn't have a 16 hmm huh. It does have four fourteens though, so it does. I guess it does balance out. It just seems, it seems like that character is a little bit weaker overall, just based off of that. Like not even a sixteen charisma, not even a fifteen charisma, uh, for that matter. To if they were using like the standard array of like the fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, ten, and eight. Um, so yeah, interesting that they sort of took that route. Uh, so twelve armor class. Dagger, Ray of Frost, Shocking Grasp, Sculpt Spells, oh, it must be an Evoker, Evocation Spawn, yeah, okay. Uh, so that's, you know, overall pretty cool, so we got the uh, the characters there. Uh, like I said, the Bard's the only one that feels a little ho-hum, um, but it's still a balanced, well-balanced character, so I don't think that's like the hugest disadvantage in the world. And as soon as they gain 4th level, you do get an ability score increase anyway. Uh, so overall, this is pretty cool. Uh, my first impression is that uh, I love the adventure. I think that the adventure is presented in such an awesome way. I just absolutely, genuinely uh, love like this booklet um, more than anything else in this set. Like this is this is the the crown piece of this particular uh, box set for me. Uh, the characters are interesting. Again, they're sort of non-conventional, and it does have a starter set with other types of characters that weren't in the original. So the original one had like two fighters, a cleric, uh, a rogue, and a wizard, and this one actually has like a dwarf. Uh, a dwarf. <laughs> uh, it has a uh, has a bard, has a paladin, and a ranger. In addition to um, like the uh, the the wizard and what was the other character? Cleric. So, yeah, pretty cool overall. Um, the starter set rule book, um, to me, again, you know, it's a licensed product, so I'm not going to complain too much about the fact that it uses uh, still images from the show, because it's the show, like, this, the, the show is plastered on, like, the title of the product. So I do expect that, you know, to be in there. But I will say, especially having, having seen, like, a character sketch of one of the characters, it would have been kind of cool to have had like sketches like these of the other characters as well, so that you can sort of see, you know, what they look like. I th I think that's sort of a missed opportunity there, maybe a little bit. Um, and I think another big missed opportunity would be to simply have a Stranger Things um, RPG like campaign setting uh, information for like the D20 Modern. So you know, if they wanted to bring back D20 Modern. This would be a really great property, I think, to use with that. Uh, overall, um, the you know it's it's an okay product. Um, I haven't read the adventure yet. Uh, the price is probably my main issue at this point in time. Uh, I don't feel like this is necessarily worth thirty-five dollars, and I know that some of the extra part of the price is you know towards the licensing fee. So I do understand that. Um, but thirty-four ninety-nine Canadian is kind of steep, uh, a steep price to pay. So uh, what I'm going to do is 
look over the adventure, uh, read it, you know, see what it's like. Uh, because you know, the, if the you know the adventure may be so good that you know it, it makes me you know feel that I'm glad that I bought this um, versus you know you know glad that I bought it for the purposes of reviewing. Uh, and again, for you know most people that are going to be buying this are not like me. They're not someone who has no familiarity with the show whatsoever. The target audience is clearly people that are fans of the show. Uh, and so for you know for the fans, I'm sure this is going to be a really awesome product. Uh, the minis are pretty cool. It's a nice inclusion to have that. Still would have loved a map, especially for the fact that this was about ten dollars more expensive than the previous starter set. Um, but, uh, like I said, it, 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 it I, I'm not going to make any, any full decisions yet as to whether or not I'm happy with this or, or a little bit let down, uh, just because, again, I'm not the target audience, so I'll read through the adventure and I'll do a review of the adventure itself, and that's where I'll sort of give my final thoughts on the starter set as a whole. But if you have the starter set and are a fan of the show, uh, let me know what you guys think of it in the comments below, because I would love to hear feedback from people that are familiar with the source material in ways that at this point I just simply am not. And I also fully admit that if I, when I finally do get around to watching the show, it may really change my opinion, even if I have sort of a so-so opinion of it right now. Um, it's possible that if I watch the show and love the show, then that may change uh, altogether for me as well. Uh, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Take care.